<sighs> Good afternoon. Um, almost didn't make it. <laughs> I've been saying that I'm committing to 4.30 p.m. every day and sometimes cutting it close. So, welcome. Thanks for joining me on my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. This is Message from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. I do these talks every day. And the reason why I do that is because I am a passionate champion of the Divine Feminine. I'm also a best-selling author, speaker, and a relationship attraction expert, helping strong and successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And today's topic um, is just inspired. <laughs> um, I, co- I basically <laughs> sometimes the ideas come out of left field. I was just sitting there with what I'm going to talk about today. I just got back from a little errand, and I was just sitting with it. And the idea that hit me was how some people negotiate relationships. And so today's um, question is, not so much do you settle in a relationship, but how often do you not ask what you really want? And for some of you out there, this is going to hit home. And it did for me too. So I'm not speaking from uh, this theory. This is from, again, personal experience. So let me put some framework on this and give you some context to play with. Some people, again, maybe not you, but some people you know, have a hard time standing in your, standing, let me say, I'll speak to you, the generic you, not you out there, but some generic you that's watching another time. You're someone who basically knows what you really want. Deep down in the, in the core of your heart, you know exactly what you want. And you're afraid to ask for it. And in fact, when you get into love and relationship with somebody else because you want to accommodate their person's well-being and their, and their person's needs, you'll negotiate. You actually have offers and counter-offers for the relationship. That's why the title is what it is. There is no need to compare one to the other. What you want and what your partner wants don't have to be equitable or negotiated or counter-offered and offered or balanced. Stand your ground. As in, stand for what you want. And if the person who's in proximity to you for a relationship cannot or will not provide that for you, or be that person for you that you've been asking for and wanting to invite into your life, you'll be willing to walk away. Because what you're doing in a lot of ways, by setting your intentions out clearly with your prospective mate, your person you're dating, is to find out where they stand. It's to really know what it is that they are looking for. And also what they're willing to provide in response to that, maybe, or in their own place we're coming from, if that makes any sense. So... The area of counter-offer in this conversation is that there are people who have chosen to be in a relationship where they've settled and had a settlement between the two parties to get what they wanted. Um, I had a thought there which I don't want to talk about now, or do I? I guess I need to bring it up. Prenup, prenups. <laughs> this came up to talk about, so I'll throw this one in too. Talking about counter-offers and offers and negotiations. In a lot of ways, what a prenup is, and this is going to hurt some people's feelings, I know, because some people are going to watch this go, what do you mean by this? A prenup is a, I need to speak to both sides of this. On one side, a prenup is, for those who don't know what it's a prenup, it's a prenup, it's an agreement made before the marriage for rules and agreements about what happens if, the, if there's a divorce. So first of all, the problem with a prenup is it's setting up a possibility of a divorce by the very phrasing what it's about. It's, a get a, it's like a backdoor clause in a way. The second thing with prenups, it destroys trust. Because there's a piece missing when you get to the point of having to negotiate what's going to happen if things don't work out. So that's one side. On the other side of prenups, and this is where it gets interesting, is the prenup creates safety for some people who need that before they can trust the other person. That speaks to volumes to trust issues. So I'm not going to go into that one right now. But the thing about it is this whole idea of prenup agreements is a negotiation that isn't a win-win. It's a not lose, not lose, which is different. So if you're looking at that as a context for your relationships, what things do you put in play? Not necessarily as a prenuptial agreement or a formal contract, but as a unspoken or spoken agreement with the other person that you are expecting them to do, provide, or not do, or not provide, that you'll be comfortable with in your relationship. Again, when you do this, you're actually settling. And I've talked about this before, that if you really want what you really want, which I know you do, why would you give that up to settle for something less than that? Unless you think this is the best you're going to get, which is not true, or that you feel like you can't handle being alone because you'd rather be in a relationship, which is also not true. So I'm basically hurting you towards one point, which is this. 
you can have what you want in a relationship. You can absolutely have the intention, the idea, the vision of what you want manifest in partnership, in relationship, in romance. And if you settle for less than that, you're selling yourself short. And that is really, I guess, is the point I want to really make and get clear to you, is that this is the dance that we have in relationships. Is to meet somebody, and I've done it myself, where I go, wow, this is such a wonderful person. This is really nice, and this is really cool, this is really cool. And then all the stuff that is the red flags, which are things like, oh, they do that, ooh, they do this. And we, we sort of sweep it under the rug, we excuse it. Because what's so good is good enough. But the thing that's so bad, or the red flags, that it's not what we want, we'll try to ignore. And maybe get away with that for a couple of years. Maybe. Maybe a couple of weeks. For me, it's a couple of days. I've done this enough times where I can't do that anymore. And I advise you to be in the same place, where you're not willing to sweep under the rug those things that will not work for you to have a relationship that is okay. Because one, it's wasting time. And two, it's making an agreement unspoken with the universe that it's okay for you to have that. And it's not. Because what's okay for you to have is the best. The truth is, if you really want what you really want in an amazing relationship, now, I mean in qualities, I don't mean certain partners because you can't all have Brad Pitt, sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm just putting some context in this. But the quality of relationship that you want, hold out for that. Be willing to say that I'm not settling for anything less than that. Because again, if you're in a place of arguing back and forth or negotiating back and forward, having this offer and counter offer, that's not really usually used the ideal level of quality of relationship you want. It's settling down, not going up. Now, if you want to play with agreements or, or um, offers where you offer higher and higher, because this is something you can do. I just said it's all about this, but no, let's be, let's, let me just shift gears. Conscious relationship. Conscious coupling, conscious whatever you want to call that. But people who are awake and aware, you can do offer and counter offer in a very positive spin. So let me just do a whole different spin from what I started with, which is sometimes, and this is something you can do for fun, when you find someone you really want to be with who's actually what you really want to be with, the qualities, the, the connections, the intimacy, all these things that you've been dreaming of and it shows up, then you can bring in the offer counter offer of how good can you make it, how far can you raise the bar. And that could be a whole lot of fun. And it just hit me like that's a whole different vision. So I'm realizing what I said at the beginning is only one side of the story. So the counter, the offer counter offer I mentioned at the beginning, this is the other side of it. We can use it for your betterment, for your um, expansion, for your possibility in an amazing relationship. And by doing that, you raise the vibration of what you two, you and your partner can have together. And you can then expand the relationship to something bigger and more amazing than you thought about. Because the other thing also with this offer counter offer idea in the positive spin is you may be awakened to things you never even thought of before. So you may have your list of qualities or your vision board or your intentions or whatever it is you have. And I do help my clients with that, by the way. But when you have somebody's input into that by the offer they offer or the counter offer they present, you may start seeing a whole another, another level of what's possible for you to have in a relationship that you didn't even dream of before. And that can be a miracle. That can be a gift that would be life transforming. So I invite you to play with that. If you're doing a vision for a relationship or if you're in a relationship now, could you set up an offer counter offer situation with your partner where you raise the stakes and you raise the bar and you raise the quality of relationship you have with your partner? If you're single, consider this as an option to add to your criteria or to your dating um, methodology and see what happens. I mean, this is not lighthearted stuff in a way. I mean, it is, but it's also game-changing possibilities for you if you're in this place. So, to rewind back a bit or to put a, put a bow on the end of this, if you're choosing the lesser of to settle, that's the opportunity to lose out in a relationship. If you're choosing to raise the standards and raise the bar and raise your intentions to come up at a higher level, that's a better quality of relationship to choose. And if you have a vision and intention of what you want in a relationship, I absolutely highly recommend that you do, in fact, hold out for what you want, be clear of what you want, and then create that. If there's something you're looking to do, ladies in particular, I have a program called Attract the Man You Want that does that for you. It's just it does that with you. So if you want more information about that, you can reach out to me. I'll tell you about that. I'm going to offer this quick suggestion to you if you want to get some help because you're getting clarity about what you want in a relationship, if you're not sure what you really want. I invite you to sign up on my website for my complimentary clarity conversation. Yes, complimentary clarity conversation. It's a tongue twister. Triple C. It's basically a discovery session. It's my gift to you. That's why it's complimentary. If you go to my website, which is barryselby.com, my name, easy to find. 
and click on the Let's Chat button on the navigation bar, you can click there and go to sign up for that, for that um, opportunity, my gift to you. I think that covers it, isn't it? Homework, homework, homework. Yes, homework. I, I do give homework. I should warn you that now. If you're someone who is um, wondering about what you want in a relationship, not sure how you're going to get there, start planning with this idea in mind. What would you offer in partnership with someone who really is standing up higher than you think that you could have before, or you step up to a high level yourself? Start playing with that in your imagination. You can write down, journal about it if you want. But consider this as an option for how you can create an amazing relationship by being willing to settle for nothing less than you really deserve. That's your homework. That'd be fun. This is, by the way, my 322nd Facebook Live broadcast around love and relationships. I do these every day. So there are lots of content. If you want to find out more about these broadcasts and watch some replays, you go to my business page on Facebook, which is barrysobia.author. You can also find them on YouTube where I end up putting them as well. And my, play, my uh, user handle is barrysobia, of course. And my playlist is Messages to the Masculine, where these all live. And also on my website, if you go to the video blog on barrysober.com, you click on those there. I think that covers everything. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. If you have any comments about this topic, please put them below. And if you need help in this area, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.